In this video, I am going to show you how to build a principal component regression in R. And before that, we will learn uh, the theory behind principal component analysis, uh, principal component analysis and, uh, and then principal component regressions. Now, those who are familiar with principal component analysis, they must be knowing that it is a dimension reduction technique and it is used to reduce uh, the number of uh, you know, variables in your data or to reduce the dimension in your data. So let us first see uh, what is the theory behind principal component regressions. Well, the idea is very simple. Uh, instead of going ahead with uh, the original set of uh, variables or features that is available to you, to reduce the set by using principal component analysis and then the principal component that you, you know, you get out of uh, principal component analysis is then to are then to be used in the regression analysis. So instead of using the original variable, you are using the uh, derived variable or uh, which are nothing uh, which are also known as principal components. So that's the idea. So it's basically uh, a dimension reduction techniques as I have already said to you. So it combines features. Now how does it combine features? It's, it's com it combines features uh, in such a way that the variation in your uh, target variable is uh, you know explained properly. So in, in a linear regression framework, let's say you have uh, y equal to uh, beta naught plus beta 1 uh, x1 plus beta 2 x2. So this is a linear regression and there are two independent variables right x1 and x2. Now principal component analysis will do in such a way that or will combine x1 and x2 in such a way to come up with a single variable uh, so that the variation in y that was explained by x1 and x2 will also be explained to the same extent or to similar extent by the combined variable. Okay. Let us for instance it combined to be g, uh, g1 which is some sort of a linear combination of alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2. Okay. So this is some sort of a com linear combination and then g1 would be replacing uh, x1 x2. So that is the idea. right? And the idea here is that the variance uh, that is being explained by x1 and x2 because that is what is the intention of building a regression analy analysis that your uh, independent variables or predictors should be able to explain the variation in your target variable y and that is what is going to be done by g1 it, uh, to, to similar extent what x1 and x2 uh, were doing. Okay, So that is the uh, idea of combining uh, you know, features to achieve the same result or similar result at least. So in that way the number of principal component that is going to be used will always be less than uh, the number of features. Okay, So you can have as many principal component as the number of features or predictors. If there are p number of predictors, you can have p number of principal component. But the number of principal components used in the uh, you know in the PCR regression is always less. And I'll tell you why it is always less. It's because if you are using the same number of principal component as that of the number of features available, then you are not reducing the dimension. You are essentially going at with the same dim dimension. So it's not going to serve the purpose. So what it's actually, uh, you know, is is uh, recommended to do is that use a very small number of principal components. Okay, let's say you have uh, seven features and you also received seven principal components. Then just see how many principal components actually maximize the x uh, variance of y, or it actually explains the maximum variance of y. Let's say three. Uh, principal components actually uh, explain 85 percent of the variation then it's always good to go ahead with only three uh, principal component instead of seven because that's what then reduces its dimension right and we'll see that with an example and it will be more clear it's not a feature selection method because we are not uh, selecting uh, features we are rather combining features to come up with a new feature which is no way related to x1 and x2. So g1 is no way explained in terms of x1 and x2. It's a it's a composite, it's a composition of x1 and x2, which is different than both x1 and x2. So we are not selecting. It's not a selection method like your uh, you know subset selection 
or uh, stepwise selection so as to say so that is one of the main difference between princ uh, principal component reduction principal component analysis which is a dimension reduction with the feature selection methods okay so the idea here is mathematically what it's done is you have a set of features and then you come up with a, a set of principal components to be used and uh, principal components will be less than equal to will be p all the times and most of the times you will see the number of principal components to be used in the regression would be uh, less than the number of features now initially we let's say we had four variables and we came down to uh, two principal components which explains maximum principal uh, maximum variations for instance uh, with all the features let's say 100 percent variation was being explained now with only two principal component 90 percent variation has been explained okay so given that 90 percent is a good enough uh, you know uh, good enough number we will rather go ahead with two uh, principal component instead of just four original variable now what is that going to do is that when you reduce the uh, uh, dimension it is going to reduce the uh, you know the uh, bias in your model okay so what is going to happen is that when you test your model when you cross validate your model your model is going to do better in your test data instead of using the original set of variable and that's one of the main reason why you one should go ahead with the principal component um, regression instead of you know the ordinary least square regression or the linear regression um, especially when a large uh, um, a majority of variations is being explained by a fewer set of principal component now that is a condition that's that doesn't happen all the times by the way it all depends on the data that we are dealing with if 90% uh, or 80% of the variation is being explained to a very small section of principal component then it's always good to go ahead with principal component if large number of principal components are required then you know it's as good as you know using the original set of variables okay so that won't then uh, make any difference to the biasness of the model so in ordinary least square you use all the independent variables or all the predictors in principal component regression you reduce your principal components to um, you reduce your original set of variables to uh, a smaller set of principal components and then use this principal components which are composite variables which are nothing but the linear some sort of a linear combination of the original variables x1 x2 and x3 and x4 and use them as in the regression so instead of beta ones we'll have beta beta 1 dash beta 1 2 dash so these betas will be different from the original beta okay and this uh, so this is principal component regression where you are using principal components instead of the original variable so that's the difference right so there are two steps in the first step you uh, use pca to do dimension direction and the second step so this is the first step uh, in the second step you do regression analysis using principal component instead of the uh, original set of variables so there are two steps and there is benefit in terms of achieving higher prediction accuracy in the test result but it doesn't always happen so pcr is not always recommendable it's uh, uh, very useful in some cases and we'll see one such case okay so here is the data set uh, with us we are going to take the heaters data we have taken it many times so we are trying to predict the salary of uh, the basketball players in the us and there are several predictors and uh, we'll see if pcr is going to do better than the uh, ordinary least square regression or not okay so in order to build a pcr regression we'll uh, use the library pls if not if the package is not installed first install it and then you can you know uh, get it onto your uh, session and then you can use a seed value so that you can reproduce the results um, if you don't want reproducibility then you can you may opt out of it but if you want to reproduce the result you just have to use the seed and that the syntax for PCR regression is, you know, is very similar to how you do a linear uh, model. So we are going to use PCR, which is the function, which is going to give us the principal component regression output. The target variable is salary of uh, the uh, basketball player. And there are several variables. In fact, you can actually see what the variables are. Uh, 
okay so we are going to see what are the variables we have so we have several variables you know uh, you can just look, take a look at it there are 19 such variables okay and then we provide the data set we are going to all 19 variables as predictors okay and then we will scale it so what do we mean by scaling so scaling is nothing but we are standardizing it okay uh, to ensure that the mean uh, is let's say 0 and the variance is 1 so that's one way of standardizing okay so we're just taking the mean out and dividing by this standard deviation okay in that way you are taking all the uh, predictor value in one scale otherwise there is going to have some scale effect which is negative uh, or which is going to have adverse effect in the outcome so always good to scale it okay uh, and then we'll you select the model with cross validations uh, so what is going to do is that uh, so the question in front of us is so how many principal components should ideally be uh, selected in the final model right because remember what I have said in the in the theory section that you can have as many principal component as you have um, uh, the predictor variables like we have 19 predictor variables so we would have ideally 19 principal components but all principal components are not going to be useful only the first few important principal components are going to be very useful otherwise uh, it's not going to be very uh, it's not going to be serve the purpose of reducing the uh, you know uh, dimension right if you're using like 18 principal component out of 19 then it's not going to serve the purpose because that dimension is remaining more or less the same right so let's run the regression and then we'll uh, look at the results so let's look at the result with the summary so we have 263 observations with 19 variables and um, we have a target variable all 19 variables have been taken into consideration and then we have the cross validations and we have the cross validation error rate for one uh, component for two components and and so on right so we'll see uh, when do we achieve the minimum uh, minimum uh, error rate and that's what we are going to select right so the idea is that if your model is doing good enough in um, in the training data it should also do well in the validation data right and uh, what is important that at what number of principal components we are going to have the uh, minimum error rate now remember you can build a model with one principal component okay so this one gives you the model with one principal component followed by two three and so on uh, and the uh, rule of thumb is that the minimum number of principal component we going to have in the model the maximum uh, purpose we are going to achieve uh, uh, by using PCR because the idea is to re uh, reduce the dimension right all right uh, now ha having that in mind so how do we select what is the best one so we can do a plot actually okay so we'll do uh, a plot which is going to plot the uh, mean square error rate okay so mean square error rate is given uh, for a each principal components or each regression right so remember this single thing right what you can see if you look at my cursor is actually for one regression so if there are tenfold cross validation we have uh, done right um, all right so for each principal components we'll have a separate regression so first with one principal component second with two principal component two top principal components okay top as in with some criteria something that gives the minimum minimum error rate okay and it, it keeps on adding uh, more principal components so on and we'll see if that actually helps by adding more or not and what is the optimum okay so the idea is to look at what is the optimum so we'll use a validation plot which is going to plot the fitness statistics and is going to plot the mean square error rate with respect to the uh, principal components okay so here is the mean square error rate and we achieve the mean square error somewhere here like somewhere 5 if I am uh, correct uh, or rather I would say here right it would be 19 or 18 right so if you see 5 and 18 are very close but when you have 18 you actually do not 
achieve anything by using PCR because you uh, might as well use an ordinal least square right instead of using a PCR because we have 19 variables and you have come down to only 18 right so there is only one reduction and that doesn't serve the purpose so, but if you look at here at 5 it is more or less the same error rate as that of 18 right but when you reduce 19 variables to only 5 principal components you actually reduce the dimension to a large extent so we would go ahead with 5 uh, principal components now the question is um, how is that going to be used or implemented okay so when you implement it you save the results with a seed value and then you do the principal component every time you use this model to predict something instead of using the original set of variables you first get the composite variables or what we call them as principal components and then use that for you know finding the uh, prediction score or the you know uh, whether it's probability score whether it's actual values you know salary and so on if now here is the intention is finding out salary so we'll use the principal component to predict the salary so that's the idea about principal component regression and one thing that is to be remembered is that only when you have smaller number of principal components doing a great job of producing uh, the dimension and giving a very low error rate then it's useful otherwise it's not if we wouldn't have achieved at 5 then there is no point in using it okay there is no point in using 15 or 18 principal components uh, and, and having uh, achieve, uh, getting a lower error rate because that we can always get it through linear regression by reducing few variables and so on. 